you would like your ICO reviewed, please contact us for competitive packages. Now, we don't review every single project that comes our way, only the top tier of ICOs that have passed an extensive qualifying process, businesses that we're actually considering investing in ourselves. Now, having said that, with any investment, there's always a potential to lose, so you must only ever invest in what you can actually afford to lose. Our contact details are in the description below. And please remember, we're not a financial institution, so anything you hear expressed here is our opinion only. The world of gambling is one that touches all of us, whether it be a Friday night card game with your buddies, or betting on your favorite sporting event, or just playing the lottery each week, most people come into contact with the world of gambling on a regular basis. Now there are a number of different online betting engines, but each try to bring something new, unique, and different to the market. Now we have a platform that is embracing the best parts of the blockchain and smart contracts, and they're bringing this to the world of betting. Let's take a peek at a new ICO called Betform. The vision for the people over at Betform is to have assets on the blockchain for gaming that are not only available to professional players, but rather something that can be used by any individual players in the social way and for fun. At Betform, the aim is to offer the user access to as large a possible range of blockchain games at a maximum degree of convenience while adhering to the highest security standards in the ecosystem. They feel this will all be accomplished by connecting blockchains, leveraging on the smart contracts, and payment channels, which works in a complete, secure, instantaneous, and low-cost manner. The revenues of game markets surpassed the 100 billion mark in 2017. Five years ago, global revenues on the game market were at approximately 70 billion. So with a growth at over 50% in the last five years, this clearly illustrates how game companies have not only pioneered new ways of engaging and entertaining customers, but have also led the way in innovating business models to suit the digital age. The future outlook for games looks great, but it is still in need of a new way of looking at the market. Most games now provide consumers with entertainment on three different levels, playing, viewing, and creating. Game companies are quickly evolving into all-round entertainment companies, pushing engagement time way up which in turn is turning gaming into people's favorite pastime. The Asia-Pacific region accounted for 51 billion this year for 47% of total game revenues. The growth represents 9.2% year-on-year increase. Overall, the share of total revenues claimed by each region has remained almost unchanged since 2016. North America is the second largest region, taking a share of 25% of the total market. Total revenues in North America will increase year-on-year by 4% to reach about 27 billion billion dollars. Most of this growth will come from the smartphone gaming platform. The fastest growing region in the coming years will be the rest of Asia without China, Japan, and Korea. With game revenues growing to 10.5 billion by 2020, up from 4.5 billion in 2016. The Latin American market will also continue its healthy growth. It should reach around 6 billion by 2020. Mobile gaming done on smartphones and or tablets was the largest segment in 2017, accounting for about 42% of the total global market. This segment also has the most gamers, with 2.1 billion, the majority of whom are gaming on their smartphones. Then we have to move over to consoles, which is the second largest segment with revenues of 33.5 billion in 2017, following on to PC browser game revenues, which are likely to decrease by about 9% to 4.5 billion as gamers continue to transition to mobile. Revenues for box downloaded PC games will most likely also drop by about 1% to 24.6 billion. The folks at Betform believe more is less. Therefore, they will be providing a three well-crafted and highly visual games in the initial token sale. The three games are Texas Poker, Big Two, and In Between. They are keeping the platform this streamlined as they have no intentions of introducing poorly designed rush games simply to bolster content. Now, Texas Hold'em Poker is one of the most famous variations of poker at present, and as well as the most popular poker game played online over the internet. For those of you who don't know, this is how Hold'em breaks down. Texas Hold'em is a variation of the card game of poker. Two cards, known as the hull cards, are dealt face down to each player. Then five community cards are dealt face up in three stages. The stages consist 
of a series of three cards. The flop, later an additional single card, the turn or fourth street, and the final card, also known as the river or fifth street. Each player seeks the best five card poker hand from any combination of the seven cards of the five community cards and their own two hole cards. If a player's best five card poker hand consists only of the five community cards and none of the player's hole cards, it's called playing the board. If you play the board on the river, then you can do no better than tie the other player or players in the game if no player can make a better hand than the board represents using either the booth hole cards. Players have betting options to check, call, raise, or fold. Rounds of betting take place before the flop is dealt and after each subsequent deal. Big Two is a very popular game in East Asia and Southeast Asia, especially throughout China, Indonesia, Macau, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Taiwan, and Singapore also known as deuces and other various names. This is a card game of Chinese origin. It is played both casually and as a gambling game. It is usually played with two to four players, the entire deck being dealt out in either case, or sometimes with only 13 cards per player if there are less than four players. The objective of the game is to be the first to play all of his or her cards. In between is not very popular at casinos, but it is often played in home poker games as a break from poker itself. Betform is offering the game to cater to the needs of the average players as it's more a game of chance. This could help the platform attract new players to the game and increase the demand for the Betform coin. Everybody antes into the pot, each player takes a turn, starting with the left of the dealer, until there is no money left in the pot. A turn consists of two cards being dealt face up, and the player betting an amount of money whether or not the third card will fall in between the first two, thus the game in between. And it is most important to point out that the game Mahjong, which is a tile-based game which was developed in China, is set to be added to the platform after the initial token sale. Now that we know what this platform has to offer, let's review its major strengths and also its potential points of growth. The main issue I feel the platform may face out of the gate is finding a way to get new customers to see how different Betform is compared to other gambling platforms. Now gambling online is something that can be done across a multitude of platforms nowadays, so they will need to find a good reason for people to come to their platform. Even a quick Google search looking for an online Texas Hold'em platform provides more responses than the average person knows what to do with. The other major issue they may face is the streamlined nature of the platform. This may end up being a positive as people may only want to come to Betform for what it is they offer. On the other hand, people who want a platform to offer more games will probably look elsewhere. Even though these games are vastly popular, people do like to have options. This may be an issue for the platform going forward. The first thing that may work really well for Betform is the simple nature of the platform. If they're able to build a loyal user base, they will only have three and eventually four games to maintain. As I said before, the issue is there will be people who want platforms that offer more, but this may not be a bad thing as Betform may be able to find a strong niche in the marketplace. The other major win is taking a bite out of two very different markets. Texas Hold'em is a game that is played globally, but has many, many followers and players in the Western world. But adding Mahjong, which is most exclusively played by folks in the Far East, which means the whole other market is now in play. This is a good move, as it's not pointing a hundred guns in a hundred different directions, but rather trying to make a strong impact in two different key markets. So where to from here for Betform? Well, as I said before, the streamlined nature of the platform will either work well or is a hindrance for the people at Betform. Should the people at Betform market their product well, then I feel that this product has a potential to be a grand success. The gambling market is vast. It has many users and there's plenty of money to be made. Let's keep an eye on this platform and see how it does in the months and years to come. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take care.